Hi, my name is Oscar Vival and I work uh, in the Sonar Ericsson Developer Program. Uh, in this presentation, uh, I will talk about security and signing and testing on Sonar Ericsson phones for Java ME applications. Uh, when installing a Java ME application on a Sonar Ericsson phone, it will live in the, in the sandbox environment on the phone. That is, it can only access APIs specified or functionalities specified by the APIs in the phone. Uh, the Java ME application cannot access the operating system or anything outside the sandbox environment. But that is not the whole truth, because in some cases the application can re reach outside the sandbox environment. Uh, for example, when uh, accessing the internet, sending an SMS or accessing the phone's file system, or when accessing phone features like the camera application uh, or trying to record audio. Uh, in this case, is that the user must give the application permission to access this functionality. When prompted by the phone, uh, on the latest Sonar Ericsson phones, the user will be able to change the permission level to the least restricted one during runtime. In the phone, there are four different permission levels. The user can deny the permission uh, request. Uh, the user can allow it once, but uh, will request it to always be prompted. Uh, the user can allow the request once per session, that is once during the application lifetime, or the user can grant full ac access for this uh, API, that is the blanket permission. The blanket permission is usually what developers want to achieve. Uh, they want to remove all the system prompts from the system. Uh, I'm not sure I ever met actually a developer that wants the system to start, or the application to actually start prompting the user for permissions. So, how can the developer get rid of these system prompts? There are different categories of uh, system uh, prompts in Java ME. For example, you will request access if you are using the internet, if you are sending an SMS, or if you are using the push register functionality in the phones. Uh, there are also different um, uh, security domains in the phones. You have the untrusted domain and you have the trusted uh, third-party domain. The untrusted domain is used for applications that are installed as unsigned on the phones. But if you install the signed application, or at least signed with a, any of the third-party certificates, that application will be installed in the third-party security domain in the phone. Depending on if the application is signed or not, the application can have different security permissions. Uh, a signed application can actually have the blanket permission and remove all the prompts from the system. But if you don't sign the application, you will always have some uh, level of prompting, especially if you're trying to access the internet. So far, we have learned that by signing the application, the system prompts can be removed. Uh, and by that, the user experience will be improved. Application signing is not only about user experience, it's also about security. And by signing, signing an application uh, and putting a signature on the application, uh, you will know that uh, no one can actually change the application or do anything with the source code of the application without ruining that signature. And that will, of course, uh, in some sense, uh, protect the developer, but also brings credibility by the user, so the user actually knows that uh, the content that the user installs on the phone is authentic. So, how can we sign an application? In Sonar Ericsson phones, we commonly have three different certificates available for developers to use. And when signing an application, it must be signed with any of these three certificates. The VeriSign and Thoft certificates can be fur cased uh, and used and easily used on the PC. Uh, but when using the UTI certificates, it's a certificate used by the Java Verified program. Uh, you must go through your verified program and have the application tested by an independent test house to be signed with a UTI certificate. In practice, signing the Java ME application is quite simple. Uh, there is a tool included in the Sony Ericsson Java ME SDK that can be used to sign the application. After the application is signed, the signature is stored in the YAD file of the application and you can see two new properties added in the YAD file. By removing these properties, you will also remove the signature from the YAD file. You must also add uh, permissions to the YAD file for a signed application. This permission 
will grant access to the different APIs used. Uh, remember, when an application is signed, the application, when installing it on the phone, the application must always be installed by using the YARD file. On many phones, it's possible to just install the application by using the YARD file. That's all from me about uh, signing. Uh, please visit uh, Sonyx on Developer World for more information. Uh, on Developer World, you can also find my wiki article about uh, signing on Java ME, uh, Sonyx on Java ME signing guidelines. Thank you.